<laughs> Let's bring back Ron Camden. He's Morgan Stanley's REITs analyst. Ron, it's great to see you. What was the mood? Yeah, great to be here. I think it was a really interesting conference, and office was obviously the focus. To set the table, when we talk to investors, when you talk to office users, over the next three years, they expect to reduce their office space by about 10%. Uh, so if you think about being 88% occupied before COVID at 82% today and potentially going to 78%. So the mood was, I don't think investors were ready to step in yet in a big way. There will obviously be, obviously be some opportunities uh, down the line in special situations. But I think right now, most people remained on the sideline. And what do you do if you're a, you know, an office-focused REIT or a company with a lot of that exposure? Yeah, it's a good question. So there are some clear trends that are happening in the office space right now. Um, the most challenging has been on the West Coast. So think of downtown San Francisco, downtown LA. We're also hearing some deceleration in the life science leasing space. So larger deals not being done. So you sort of have to uh, play defense right now and you have to sort of tweak your rents to get occupancy. I think on the other side of that coin is if you look at the East Coast, if you look at Manhattan, if you look at Boston, you are seeing signs of activity and for the operators that are able to sort of protect occupancy, uh, that's what I think investors are going to be able to gravitate to. Yeah, we were just showing Hudson Pacific, that stock down about 60 percent over the past year, more California-focused Boston properties, uh, less bad. You know, it's interesting you bring up life sciences because yesterday, Jonathan Litt, was, who, you know, is a longtime analyst, was looking through the REITs uh, for some longs. And he looked at Alexandria, expecting maybe to enter a position there, ended up coming out with a short position. He was on Fast Money to discuss it and kind of making this point. What's going on with life sciences? What, what's the macro that's driving now concerns about that part, which we all would think would be a relative source of strength in the office market? Yeah. So the large cap uh, life sciences users, you know, whether it's the Pfizer's or the Moderna's, are still doing fine, are still around. What's happened in the life science space is that the incremental demand drivers were always sort of the mid and smaller users. So as life sciences funding has sort of dried up, so you've taken that incremental user out of the market, and that's weighing on leasing activity. So right now, when you have the big users on pause and the smaller users facing a funding cliff coming in the back half of the year, that's putting some pressure on the leasing activity. And I think that's that's what's uh, putting an overhang on the sector. Sure. And Alexandria only down about 10 percent over the past year. So really would have a lot of catch up to the downside. Let's talk about some names you're still bullish on. Uh, well Tower, we mentioned that chart going into the break. That's more senior living, if I'm not mistaken, and kind of healthcare oriented or, or we call it kind of recovering from healthcare challenges. Talk to me about the fundamentals there and, and where else in, in real estate broadly do you think is still pretty well positioned? That's right. So we get this question a lot from investors, which is, where is pricing still accelerating in the real estate space? And senior housing is one of the few spaces. So if you think about revenue per occupied room, it grew about 7% in, in the first quarter of the year. And we think those trends can continue to improve throughout the rest of the year. What's important about that is you're growing twice as fast as sort of the rest of the REIT market. And this cycle, because of construction costs, because of delays, because of labor costs, there's been actually less supply coming online. So not surprisingly, when you have sort of both the demand and a supply tailwind, it paints for a pretty interesting picture. I think the other sector that came out at our conference was uh, senior uh, single family housing. Single family housing, because of the mortgage rates, it's been very, very tough to buy a home. So most people have been forced renters. So these are businesses that are operating with very, very good quality tenant, rent to income ratios five times covered. And you're also seeing sort of renewal rents in the 7 to 8% range. So anytime we can see a sector that's growing twice as fast organically without a supply headwind, we think it's pretty interesting. Yeah, and even in office, uh, Highwood, I think it is, is kind of the Sun Belt. That's maybe where you're saying you might be focused for some opportunity. A lot of great stuff in here. Important time, Ron. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it.